woman standing on the moon in the book of Revelation. But what I want to focus on today is this link which the Word of God makes between the woman and the moon. This link should inspire us to take some time to meditate on the moon, which is the work of God's hands, to let it teach us about the person and mission of Our Lady. For as the psalmist teaches us, the heavens proclaim the glory of God, and the firmament shows forth the work of his hands. So we remind ourselves that creation has been called the handwriting of God. And in the same way that our handwriting can tell a graphologist something of our personality, so creation can reveal something of the knowledge of God to us. As long as we link our meditations on the creation of God with the Word of God. And the Word of God tells us the heavens proclaim the glory of God and the firmament shows forth the work of His hands. If this is so, then we can be certain that just as His Word reveals God to us, so also does His creation. And not only God, but also the Blessed Virgin in her glorified humanity. The Word tells us she is standing on the moon. The moon circles the earth and it receives all its beautiful light from the sun whose light it reflects. It is, it is not a source of light, it reflects light. The moon enlightens the night. These facts about the moon have much to tell us about Our, Our Lady. As the moon encircles the earth, it reminds us of Mary's mission throughout the history of the Church to be a beacon of light and hope to the pilgrim people of God. We see the moon in the night, and so we can recall that it is so often we can recall that it is so often in the darkest times of the Church's history, perhaps now, that she has turned herself to Mary, the Church turns herself to Mary and, gained, and gains the help which she needed and needs now. And we can think perhaps here of the reign of Pope Pius V, in the 16th century, when the Muslim armies were threatening to overrun Europe itself because of the disunity caused by the, Pro by the Protestant Reformation. The Pope formed an alliance with King Philip II of Spain, who sent the famous Armada to these shores, and also the Venetians. And Dom John of Austria, was given command of the fleet of ships of the Allies in the battle, the famous Battle of Lepanto, which was waged on the 7th of, o of October 1571. And in that battle, the power of the Muslim on the seas was broken forever. And on that day of the battle, the Pope was discussing some matters with his secretary in the Vatican, and suddenly he lapsed into silence and went to his window, and opening the large shutters, was lost in thought as he gazed out into the void. And then suddenly he said, as he came to himself, it is not the time for doing business now, that has returned thanks to God, our armada has even now defeated the Turkish fleet. And he later went on to attribute the victory solely to the recitation of the Rosary, with such conviction that he instituted the feast of Our Lady of the Rosary on that day, which is celebrated every day on October the 7th the anniversary 
of the Battle of Lepanto. Taking our meditation further, we noted that the moon receives all its light from the sun. This beautiful solar fact speaks of Christ, the Son of, of Justice, who sheds the light of his grace on, in a preeminent way upon his mother, as the mother of the church. Mary reflects the light of Christ as the moon reflects the sun's light, as the sun and the moon illumin illuminate our, our bodies, so our minds are illuminated by Christ, and his mother as the archetype of the church. The question is, are we allowing ourselves to bathe in this supernatural light? On earth, in order to benefit from the sun's rays, we come out of the shade. How much easier it is on a dark night to find our way by the light of the moon. In the same way, we need to raise our minds spiritually to Christ and his mother. And if we do this, the more magnificently and clearly their light will shine, not only upon us, but through us. Does not Jesus say, draw near to me and I will draw near to you? Indeed, our God is not a distant God, but one who comes near, in fact, wants to live in us. Do we come near enough, though? Are we content only rather to stay with the crowds and listen to Jesus relating parables to us? Or do we desire to draw near and to sit at his feet, always, devoting ourselves solely to hearing his word, untroubled by the multitude of cares, but choosing the best part, the better part which is not to be taken away from us? We think of Martha and Mary here. Again, the moon can help us and inspire us. Indeed, the whole planetary system, which moves with such grace and order, can only do so because of the force of the sun around which we all revolve. In the same way, we can feel the spiritual gravitational pull of our hearts to Christ, the sun that enlightens all men who have come into this world. Our hearts are restless until they rest in him. As we rest in him, so we will reflect his light to others ever more clearly because he will be explaining to us in private what he told the crowds and illuminate us much more clearly. He will be teaching us the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. But let us not even be content with this because the more we rest in him, he will call us to follow him up the mountain of, of transfiguration, to be enlightened not only by himself, but by the voice of the Father himself. The Father will then point us even further and say, if you would be perfect, regard the moon and who I have placed upon it, the one who reflects the light of my Son perfectly. Look to her if you would do the same.